Websites or quotes from publication. As I articulate this information, I to create a university here, heart, soul, mind, and spirit. Because why? The truth don't need no partner. As a descendant of the greatest people who created this place that we call the United States, we, the foundational Black Americans, the bloodline historical lineage, the people known as B A D O S. Black American descendant of slaves. Some say black African descendant of slaves. Others say American descendant of slaves. We, the today's children, offspring, and present generation, we give honor to our ancestors. You know what the motto of my show is? I'm never gonna tell you what I heard. I'm only gonna tell you what I know. Today's day is November 23rd, 2019. After one month, 23 days, maybe 25 days of a hiatus. See, nobody wanted to care what was going on with Mr. Blow Your Mind, so I don't shout no names. It is what it is. On the return, we're going to do one of one hit of the day just to get back our feet wet. After I did, and I did some things to get my show a little bit more better than what it's been, but you won't see it. So we're gonna go today in Indianapolis, where a situation happened about well, about ten days ago. Uh, again, that's on my hiatus. What I did is I seen people out here, but they weren't doing much. So what I'm gonna do? Backtrack as I always do. Obviously, y'all had other places, so we're gonna stay tuned as I we. Black Minds News and Mr. Blows Your Minds will get into this particular topic. Stay tuned for this broadcast. Hey, 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 how's y'all doing again? This is your host, Mr. Blows Your Minds, your whiteologist. Coming back again from a little hiatus. You want to see how things were, see everybody seemed to, I actually probably went and found other places. I bet you've been bored out your mind because you can't get it like you get it over here. First and foremost, for those who are still subscribers, what's good, fam? Long time no here. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you want to see what people feel for you, but obviously you didn't feel for me that way. Don't. I ain't going to say nothing, but you need to hang your head low because you didn't even want to inquire what's good with you, Mr. Blow Your Mind. So again, I get to see where you're coming from, what kind of fair weather friends you might be. So anyway, what's good to you? Passerbys, this is the most hated show in the black corner of YouTube. Again, I'm your host, Mr. Blow Your Mind. You can go down the aisle, see some things that you might like. If you happen to see some things that make you feel some kind of way, remember the model of the show is the truth. Don't need no partner. Now, let's go ahead. Let me go ahead and set this up real quick. We're going to do this something like, you know, we got to do it. Um, this particular story here kind of caught my interest a little bit because, again, you know, as over here what we do is... Uh, you know, we bring light to situations about, again, we as B-A-D-O-S, Black American Descendant of Slaves. Some say American Descendant of Slaves. Some say FBA, Foundation of Black America. But again, there's been a rift going on here in YouTube as I've been sitting back observing a lot of things. And I just have to say that, you know, 
we as these people, this lineage of people, uh, got to understand that we don't need all this rip and rip. So I felt like as for me as that individual, even though I am the most hated show in the Black Corner and the most suppressed show that has been out of any show that anybody want to talk about, you ain't been more suppressed than me. And yet I fight the duration even though the numbers will never show that I'm being heard. But I do this not for the simple fact of economics and anything like that. I do this because, again, somebody has to do it. So today I'm just going to do this one hit just to get back into this. Then I'm going to start getting back into it again because, again, you know, YouTube is going to do this change, right? They're going back into these things of change. So you know what uh, that does. Every time when they get into the change, people start to fall out, trying to figure out where they fit in, where they get in. And that's just what doesn't happen here. So this thing here is always on the theme line of what we always do. Those who are avid watchers of my show, you realize this is what we do. Now, again, this situation is about, again, being black. In the United States, especially when you are of the lineage, again, a historical with our ancestors and to this day, present day, it's still, you know, have these issues that we deal with. This particular story happens up in Indianapolis. Some brothers decided they was going to go in, do some little shopping, and a situation arises. Now, again, we're going to have to look at this and pick and glean from the situation and try to decipher, again, what is the core line situation that seems to be in every situation, no matter what situation you put it in? So I ain't going to talk about it no more. Let me go ahead and let you see it. Then afterwards, um, I will come back again. And then, you know, I will give my little, you know, interpretation of how I'm seeing it. Right. So then that will be we're back right after that. So sit back for a hot second. I'll go ahead and get into this, and we should be right back. Check this out, y'all. Everything working good. Let's see if we got it going good today. I got my rights to do anything I want to do. Officer immediately fired after viral video shows him stopping black shoppers for acting suspicious. You know I'm going to say that again. I got my rights to do anything I want to do. Officer immediately fired after viral video shows him stopping black shoppers for acting suspicious. This story is coming out of the Washington Post. November the 20th, 2019, under the caption says, Lawrence Township Deputy Constable Daryl Jones in a screenshot on November 12th outside a Nordstrom Rack in Indianapolis, and the story reads like this. Aaron Blackwell and his cousin, Darrell Cunningham, had no idea why the Nordstrom Rack security guard was striding purposefully towards their car. It didn't make sense, Blackwell would later recall the man had watched the pair pay for their items inside the Indianapolis store, yet he still followed them outside and tried to take down their license plate number. Now, he was demanding Cunningham present his driver's license. You're acting suspicious, the man told the cousins, who are both black. If he didn't see identification soon, the man threatened to tow their car or worse, have them arrested. The tent standoff that played out last week in the parking lot outside the Nordstrom Rack was captured in a 17-minute cell phone video that has since gone viral, sparking accusations that the two men were racially profiled by the white security guard, who was later identified as Lawrence Township Deputy Constable Daryl Jones. The video was posted to YouTube on November the 13th, and Lawrence Township Chief Constable Terry Burns told RTV6 he made the decision immediately to fire Jones, ousting the veteran law enforcement officer that night. Jones, who was off duty at the time of the incident, is also no longer employed at the store, NBC News reported Tuesday. By early Wednesday, the YouTube video had more than 350,000 views and 2,000 plus comments. 
Blackwell, who recorded and shared the clip, told WTHR he had been contacted by the police nationwide expressing concern and outrage over what happened to him and his cousin. I have supported from a lot of people, and some of them are even other law enforcement officers, he said. So, I don't want people to think that all cops are bad, or he represents all officers. There are some really good officers out there who would never treat people that way. The saga began November the 12th when Cunningham brought Brackwell to the Nordstrom Rack just north of Indianapolis for some shopping, describing himself as a loyal customer to that store, according to the video. But as the two men pursued the merchandise, Blackwell sensed something was off. They were being watched. The whole time, this guy is standing in there staring at us, Blackwell said in the video. I'm like, cuz, this is kitty really beaming on us. Jones lingered nearby while the men checked out, racking up a bill that totaled more than $1,000. Blackwell wrote in the caption on the YouTube video. Then the officer trailed him to the car. That's when the men says Joan attempt to jot down their license plate number, prompting them to drive to the front of the Nordstrom Rack where Blackwell pulled out his cell phone and started recording. I wanted to be in front of the store if he pulls me over, Cunningham said in the video. An unmarked white car can be seen slowly approaching from the opposite direction, coming to stop near Cunningham and Blackwell. Jones get out and makes a beeline to the two men, ordering them Cunningham to get out his driver's license. The men push back repeatedly, asking Jones why he needs to see identification. Because I told you to, the deputy constable responds. He later says, because you want to run your mouth to me. The situation escalated when one of the men tells Joan he doesn't have the right to run the car's license plate. I got my right to do anything I want to do, Jones yells, leaning into the open door window. I'm a police officer. Jones warned the men that if he doesn't carry a driving license, he'll tow their car. At one point, even threatening him, I'm going to lock you up. Throughout the exchange, Cunningham and Blackwell kept pressing Jones to explain why he stopped them, only learning that he believed they were behaving in a suspicious manner. About five minutes into the video, Jones called for backup, and soon an officer from the Indianapolis Metropolitan Police Department shows up. These guys were inside there, Jones says to the officer. They got a bunch of stuff. Then they ran their mouths to me as they were leaving, trying to make sure I didn't get their license plates. And then he didn't want to show me ID. Then the three officers start to ask Jones questions. Are the two men suspected of stealing anything? They bought a bunch of stuff. What infractions are they accused of committing? Suspicious behavior? What was suspicious? He was calling me out in my car. Cunningham immediately interrupts to clarify that he never called Jones anything and that he had just asked why the law enforcement officers wanted his license plate information. The cousins quickly recap their version of the event to the Indianapolis police officers and once they finish, officer takes Jones out of earshot and talks to him for a couple minutes. You're free to go. Jones tells Cunningham and Blackwell shortly after, barely pausing to deliver the message. After Jones leaves, the men speak to the IMPD officer again, further detailing their experience and accusing the deputy constable of profiling them. As far as I know, based upon what happened, I don't think either of us or either of us have any reasonable suspicion to believe there's a crime taking place. The officer says there's no reason for a traffic stop at this point, so there's no legal requirements for you to identify yourself. Spokesperson for the Indianapolis Metropolitan Police Department told RTC TV6 that no report was filed after the incident, but an officer did respond to the scene on the afternoon of November 12th. One day later, Blackwell uploaded footage at the exchange to YouTube's titling the video Harassed by Low-Life Racist Cop for Spending Big Money. 
Burns, the lost Lawrence Township chief constable, told NBC that he fired Jones within two hours of watching the clip. Jones could not be reached for comments late Tuesday. Still, Blackwell said he isn't entirely satisfied with the outcome. This is not just about me or my cousin or even just this city, he said in a YouTube video shared Monday. It's about how things have been and how things cannot continue to be. So we're going to push and we're going to fight everybody. Because I told you to. You haven't have a reason, sir. You didn't. You I'll didn't pull you me what. over. But Either you didn't pull me over. Get the out, or I'll hit for a backup and call I'll take call you out of the car. Call, call your, your supervisor. Driver's license call your supervisor, out. sir. Get your driver's license out right now. Call your supervisor. Get Please your call your supervisor. Because you had no. You're not pulling me over, neither. You get your driver's license out sir. right now. Show me ID. Call your supervisor. What do you need my ID for, sir? Well, because you you want to run your mouth to me. No, because you was looking at my license plate That's for a, what? Exactly. For what? You don't exactly. have the right to run this. I got my rights to do right anything to I want to do. I'm a police officer. You can't that, run that, that doesn't mean anything. It doesn't I'll mean anything. You over and I'll tow your car. You can't tow my car. Get your, get you're your not pulling me over. Out. You're not pulling me over. Get your driver's What is your badge number, out. sir? Right there it is. What's your name? Can you read it to me? Yeah. What's your name? Read your badge get number your and your name. Get your driver's license. Read your badge. I'm up. asking you. You can't I'm lock me up. You. you can't lock me up. Control top 3315. We're asking you to call a supervisor, sir. Yeah. I'm, I'm telling you, we're not getting a supervisor. We're not getting a supervisor? You see, he said. Get your driver's license he, out. So he's not getting a supervisor. We requested a supervisor. I don't mind showing you my driver's license, you but driver's license. what is your reason that you're asking? Because. Why? Because you're acting suspicious. How About what? You we, what? You we uh, was in there shopping. I said, show me your driver's what license. What is the what is the, sus, what is the sus, uh, suspicion, sir? Get your driver's license out. You can't you can't Just state show the me suspicion. Your driver's license. That's sir, all I want to see. You're not explaining to me. You didn't pull I'm me over. To you, you jumped at your car and I'm asked doing me did an I want to investigation. It? What's the inve what are you investigating? No, you just see me in there shopping. Out. We I paid. I paid. I paid for everything that I bought. Get your driver's license out. Sir, Show can, me your driver's license. If you if you don't got no warrants or nothing, you're gone. I don't have no problem. What or what is the reason that you're stopping me? License. I'm not going to argue with you no more. I'm not if arguing. I, I'm yeah. trying to understand Show something. Your the other we car gets you. I'm going to take both of you out, Show, show and I'm going to tow your car. Can you give me your name? Your failure. Your failure to identify. I'm not. 
You have no reason. You you have no reason to pull me over. Tell me your driver's You didn't even pull. You're not even behind me. You jumped out the car and told me to stop. Exactly. Stopped right here. We weren't in traffic, sir. We were pulling out of a parking spot. Or I'm going to tow your car. You're not going to tow anything. You can't tow the car, sir. You're not going to tow a car. Call 911. I am. On my phone. He's Lawrence. He's Lawrence too. I know. I know a couple of them. I'm not refusing anything. I just want to first know. Of all, driver's license. First of all, you had to suspect him of a crime to ask for his identity. You didn't, didn't do that. You don't know yeah, the law. Yeah, I do know the law. No, you don't you, know the law. Once you Get look your me. driver's license out and make this easy. Just show me your driver's license and you can go. What's your name, officer? That's all I want. Because we're following the driver's license and you can go. We asked for a supervisor. You did not understand. I'm, I'm not going to get a supervisor. I'm asking for your name. Off duty you, employment. You're off duty? Exactly. Off duty employment. If you're off duty, then why are you stopping people? I'm stopping you because you're suspicious. <laughs> why are we what? suspicious? Well, what'd you come back around for? Because I want to know no, your, your. No, you jumped out of the car on us exactly. because we looked at you. Because I don't know what you guys are doing. Now, show me your you driver's license. You don't know what license. we're doing. You just seen show a shop. Show me your driver's license. You don't look. You see all these bags in the back of the car? We just came out of the store seeing you, so you show know me what your we're doing. Driver's license. Just show them to me. And if your driver's license check out, I'm not. I'm gonna let. I'm gonna let it go. Oh, it's not gonna be let go. I don't care what. Sir, what is it now? Threaten me? Are you threatening me? It's not me? going to be let go. Are you going to threaten me? You're, you're, are you why crazy? Are you, why are you got your you hand in here? You going to threaten the police officer? Why you got your hand on the window? I'm not scared of you. I'm not worried about you. I'm not worried anything. about you. Either. We ain't broke no Get laws. Your driver's license out right now. We are not I'm broke about no to, laws. sir. Can you give me your name? Get no. your driver's name? license out. Can, can you, you, can can you identify name? yourself? Get your driver's license out. Can you identify yourself? Get your driver's license. Can you identify yourself, sir? You see who I am. You see my badge. What's your name? What is your name? Get your driver's license. What is your name, sir? Control Tom thirty three fifteen. What is your name, sir? That's all we asking you is your name. Ma'am, can you send a officer to back me up at Nordstrom Rack on Eighty uh, Second Street? Refusal to identify. You. <laughs> Negative. Refusing to identify himself. Get your driver's license out. A civil servant. Off duty. Off duty, pulling people over at Nordstrom Park. Ain't nobody pulled you over. You stop. Well, if you ain't no, pulling us over, you, you don't stop need to see no license. You jumped out and stopped no, me. No, I said, show me your driver's license. You jumped out and stopped me. I said, show me your ID. You jumped out and stopped I'm me, sir. Argue with it's sir, not an argument. Okay, wait, we just had. Wait, it's just wait. one question. What was the reason for you jumping out on us? Suspicious behavior. What? Like what? Exactly. What was the suspicious behavior? Exactly. Buying a buying a bunch of shoes but at you Nordstrom. Guys are coming back around to look at me. No, you or jumped do out the car. You're gonna do. You I don't jumped know out you the car first. What? You jumped out the car first. That's why we Get came your back. Driver's license out. It's the last time I'm going to tell you. Because you ain't got to do nothing. He can't even pull you over out there. He's not. He can't pull you over. Get your driver's license. Let's go, out. We're gonna wait for backup, sir. Yeah, we want uh, 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 an authority over you, or you, you don't have no authority over not me. me. Not We're me. Asking, we want the, your supervisor. Has authority over me. Your supervisor? Who's your supervisor? I don't have a supervisor out. Oh, you're you're a, you're a self-contracted civil servant. Is that what you're saying? I don't answer questions to you. We'll wait. You don't even answer who, what your name is, officer. Nope. You can't even tell us that. Nope. Are you really an officer of the law? Yep. We don't have any proof that you are. Well, that's because you bad. have a shirt that Get says your driver's Lord. license out. What is your proof that you're you're even legal to pull? Shut stop up! Us? What Why is your don't proof? you shut up? What I'm not talking proof? to you. What is your proof? I'm being calm. You don't have to yell and spit in the car. Yeah, I do. Now you're spitting bodily fluids on us. Yeah, there you go. You know, better get your driver's license out. That's all right, officer. We're 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 complying. You have to suspect him of doing something. Suspicious behavior. I got these guys were inside there. They got a bunch of stuff, and uh, then they brought them out to me as they were leaving to try to make sure I didn't get their license plate. And then he didn't want to show me ID. Off Officer Shrillman. No, they didn't steal items. We bought a bunch of items. They bought a bunch of stuff, but. but when they were sitting right here, I was trying to get their license plate. He hollers out the window, you're not getting my plate. And he takes off, 
so I went to get him. Then he comes back and he stops here. So I asked him for driver's license. It, uh, it's all on video. That's not what happened. Okay. What, uh, what infraction did he commit? Nothing at all, officer. It's suspicious behavior. I'm wanting an ID. Okay. What, uh, what was suspicious about it? Because he was calling me out in my car. What did I call you, sir? I didn't call you anything. You I asked you, I asked I you what were you trying to get my license plate for? That's what I asked you. Okay. Well. And then I came back to really see what was going that, on. That's why we stopped in front of the store. With my hazards on. And he jumped out. We have it on record. He jumped out and told me to stop. Okay. And started asking us for ID and all this and that. And, and then he I, said we was looking suspicious of how. You, we was in the same store he was in. We were shopping. Okay. He just seen I'm a loyal shopping. customer here. Okay. I shop okay. here all the time. The thing is, he asked for my license for what reason? That's all we asked him, officer. That's all we asked him. What what infraction or what crime do you suspect us of committing? And then we asked him for a supervisor. He said, you're not getting okay. a supervisor. Hang, hang tight for me for just one second. Yes, sir. That's IMPD. You got some sense. They were just rude. This is what he's saying. Now, now. They were just rude. He said a threatening man. That's not a threat. Don't put it, don't even show. Nah, I just, yeah. Let me put my belt on. See, they ain't got time for this foolishness. 911, mm -hmm. what happened? Nothing, I hung up on him. Cause he's here. This dude is crazy. I ain't never seen nothing like this, bro. We gotta upload that too. I have never seen, oh, it's, it's going to the news and everything. He's gonna lose his little job. Look. God, she's bad. Look at her, cuz. Yeah, she's bad. Goodness. She's probably like, man, she's probably like, damn, he's harassing now. Well, we didn't get your name. We What's, never got your name. Officer. Hey, officer. Yes, gentlemen. Officer. Okay, so when we, we first came in here, right? Mm -hmm. So he comes here all the time. Sure. I'm his cousin. Okay. Okay. So we came in here. He bought some things for his daughter. Mm -hmm. We bought a few pairs of shoes. The girl at the counter knows him well. They had a nice conversation. Sure. But the whole time... This guy is standing in there staring at us, right? Okay. And I don't want to be the first one to say he profiling us or whatever, whatever, you know, or whatever. But it is what it is. Sure. So, I go back in there. I take the uh, take the little carts back in there. I'm like, cuz, this, this uh, security is really beaming on us for some reason. Mm -hmm. So, I take the carts back in. And the girl, we had left one of the bags. So, she's sure. like, I'm glad y'all came back because you left a bag. So, we grabbed the bag. When I come out. We fire up a cigarette, we blowing everything up, and this dude is just staring at us. Then he pulls his notebook out. Mm -hmm. Mind you, he was in the store the whole time until we came out. Okay. So when we first got here, he had pulled up beside us. So we basically got here at the same time. Mm -hmm. So when we come out, he, he comes, comes out. out. Sure. Gets in his car, right? So once he gets in his car, I'm like, it's obvious that I said, cuz he's probably gonna try to run your plate. Mm -hmm. We ain't worried about him running the plate. But yeah. the point is, ain't nobody dumb, man. You got to have some type of reason for running the plate. You're, uh, you're not necessarily. We can we can run plates for any reason okay. or no reason. Okay, okay. Well, say, well, say what he does have to have is he have to have what's called reasonable suspicion in order to make a stop. On you. He has and, to have some sort of reasonable suspicion that a crime has been committed. Correct. And at that point, you know that that's why I asked him. And, 
and that's, what suspicion that's, do you have to that, stop them? And I heard yeah. you asking them that. And, and my thing was, you just seen us buying these items. And that's why when he was explaining to you, you was like, well, loss prevention said they stole some stuff. Right. No, that's not what happened. You just seen us buy this stuff, load it in our car. What's, mm -hmm. What is making us suspicious? Then he I said, don't know. Then so he said, that's why I asked him it, that question. When we asked him to identify himself, mm -hmm. is he supposed to identify himself? We just asked him his name. What's your name, officer? He was like, I don't got to tell you my name and blah, blah, blah. Well, can well, we see your supervisor? He's, he's, he's supposed to identify himself as a law enforcement officer. So, right. I mean, he could say, I'm with Marion County Sheriff's Department. Okay. Yeah. And so. then he said, then he said something about he's off duty, something, something. Yeah. I said, I said, because he can't even. I don't even, because does he have the power to even pull people over on the street? We're still in he's the... A, if he's a Marion County Sheriff's deputy, then yeah. Okay, that's cool, that's cool, but we're still in the parking lot. If somebody's lot. committed a traffic infraction, yeah. We're still in the parking lot, man. Yeah. And I mean, he you was can still commit traffic infractions in a parking lot, but the question is what infraction was committed to justify a stop. As far as I'm concerned, there was no traffic infraction, it so there's no, there's no reason to stop the vehicle. So, so, can you give us his name? I don't know his name. He won't give us the name. So I want, we want to file a complaint. Okay. And I know he's Lawrence, and that's what I was like. I know y'all ain't got time is, for is, this foolishness. Is he Lawrence or is he? I, I don't. He said Lawrence on. Said. Yeah, it said Lawrence Township. Okay. Something, something. So that that'll be something that you'll have to take up. We'll, with we'll get with the Lawrence I, Sheriff's Department. Yeah. Uh, if that's the case, because I, honestly, I don't know who he is. I've never seen him before. He was I, aggressive too, man. Like he okay. was just like like when he, you was talking to him, you see how he was stumbling. He couldn't really explain why we're suspicious. Sure. Why are we suspicious? So how can we get his his information? Because he uh, won't give it to us. We can get it from the store, maybe? I mean, you can... I don't know if you can get it from the store. You can call Lawrence. Uh, and just Sheriff's ask someone who you had on this location. Who was working at the Nordstrom Rack at yep. this time on this date. They might be able to give you that information. Because we definitely uh, want to file a complaint. If you don't man. get his name, you can at least give a description of him. If I got him on video. You can say, this officer, he looked like this. He was driving an unmarked vehicle at this location, this date, this time. They might be able to figure that Look out. Look at the car they gave him. That's how much they care about him. It's rusty. Look at the car they give me. <laughs> <laughs> I got a hole in my fender about the size of my hand I can stick through from the rust going on. Out there. That's a 2008 with 188,000 miles on it. Uh, I call her barely faithful. Yeah. So. Well, we appreciate you being civil with us and and, yeah, no and, and trying to really figure out what really was going on because yeah. look. Well, the only way for me to figure out what's going on is to ask questions. Right. I don't know what's going right. on. Right. And I, I know y'all so. know I know IMPD. I know y'all got bigger and better things to do than come up here for some some uh, rogue security officer man but he just kind of he just like he made our experience so bad man and it was unnecessary and he just okay but yeah. i we just wanted to explain it to you you know sure. what, what was going on yep, because i, I know he he was he couldn't really articulate what he was trying to say yeah I, as, I, as far as as far as i know based upon what happened i i don't think either of us have any reasonable suspicion to believe right. that there's a crime taking place right he says there's no reason for a traffic stop at this point right so there's no legal requirement for you to identify yourself to an officer at that right. point so right. if you don't want to give him id then you know you don't have to give him id at that and, point and that's and we tried to we tried to be calm and talk to him I like that you. and he just I don't have to tell you anything. He's leaning in the car, spitting all in the car. He's just, okay. I don't know if he's having a bad day. His wife that left him. I don't know. Could be. I don't Your know, man. guess is as good as mine. But, hey, man, I appreciate you, boss. As far as I'm boss. concerned, you guys are good to go. All yes, right, sir. Take care, all right. All right. Appreciate it. Well, I don't want to call him the name. Well, I don't <laughs> <laughs> Dipshit. Dipshit. <laughs> idiot. <laughs> Fucking idiot. Bye, dummy. Look at him. Fuck you. Yeah. Fuck you. <laughs> Piece of shit. <laughs> Keep it up. All right, so we are back. All right, so we see here a situation that took place back in November 12 of 2019. Looks like some brothers decided to go to a store called Nordstrom Rack. Now, I myself personally have been to Nordstrom Rack, and I know you could go in and get some discounted stuff. That's some quality, and sometimes it's marked down due to there could be some blemishes or some 
irregularities in it, right? And, uh, you know, I got some gators and shit up out of there, so I know how that goes. So they went up in there, it looks like they was going to go purchase some things. And then while they were in there, we see that this individual here, well, one of the, uh, the two brothers' name is Aaron Blackwell. The other brother's name is um, Duran Cunningham, right? And we see that this individual name, he's a constable, Daryl Jones, right? Uh, he's a veteran officer, and uh, his name was Daryl Jones. Now, again, you know, sometimes we don't know all the ins and outs. So, again, when it talks about what is a constable, right? They call him a constable. And so a constable is an officer of a, mun a municipal corporation. He's usually elected, right? Whose duties are similar to those of the sheriff, though his powers are less and his jurisdiction smaller. So he's kind of like police to a um, security guard, right? So he's like a security guard, even as a sheriff, right? Constable, right? He is to preserve the public peace. Keep this in mind. Execute the process of magistrates, courts, and on some other tribunals, serve writs, attend the sessions of the criminal courts, have the custodies of juries, and discharge other functions sometimes assigned to him by the local laws or by statutes. Powers and duties of constables have generally been replaced by sheriff. So he's not really even a sheriff, right? He has smaller jurisdiction, smaller power, kind of like a police and a security guard situation, right? Kind of like what he was, right? So we see that again, we're not going to downplay the fact that again, you know, sometimes you just got to have that second income. So, you know, a lot of times what police officers do is they moonlight, is what they say, right? Moonlight. Go there and get them a little part-time job, and that way they know they can already got permission to FOID, be able to carry a gun, know the law, so they should know how to deal with situations accordingly. So we see that Aaron and Duran go in there, according to what the article said, they bought about $1,000 worth of merchandise, shoes and stuff. As you heard in the video, he kind of explained, but I'll talk about that when we get down a little later. And uh, we see that uh, as the video show that they had went after purchasing. But let's go back a little bit before I say that. Because, again, I have to say this. The setup was they were in there purchasing. This Daryl Jones, who was a off-duty constable who moonlighting for Nordstrom, is the security for Nordstrom. And while they were in the process, according to what you heard in the video that the brother said, that he noticed that Daryl Jones was observing, as they say, beaming. You know what I'm saying? My was beaming on us. And so he kind of had his antenna, his ADT, right? You know, your defense mechanism starts to rise. And uh, he right away recognized that my man is kind of just watching us now. Imagine this, you already in the store. So now this take place within the confines of the place, right? Not where you're going to see the video starts. It starts within the establishment of Nordstrom's as according to what they say. So he watches them go through the process of purchasing, getting bagged up, getting runged up. And as you heard the brother say in the video, as they leave, he's leaving with them. As they go to get in their car, he's going to get in his car. So, based on that, again, the brother, that again, I'm, I'm, I'm under the assumption that it must have been Duran Cunningham, right? That was the one, which was the cuz, that recognized who it was. And then was like, he seemed a man, so he was already a little suspicious, like a man already owned something. So let's kind of peep this with this going. And so they see my man trying to get license plates and somewhere in there, they kind of like, man, you know what I'm saying? We got to be, you know, this dude trying to keep coming up with some shit, right? So what ended up happening is I guess they circle back to make sure if who they thought he was or whatever. You know, again, you, you doubling back because you don't. Okay, so based on that, this is what my man is trying to use as me using the word as he said suspicious, right? 
Think about that suspicion. Now, you know, again, Mr. Blow Your Mind, be that word Smith, right? So you know what it is, what he's, he's secretly, codedly saying. He's saying, well, niggas look questionable. Hmm? The niggas was open to questions or doubt about whatever the hell you are here to do. I'm kind of questioning it. Uh, you niggas, uh, let's say, uh, this is kind of debatable. What was your real purpose here, right? I'm doubtful that you niggas just purchased all that merchandise and it was copacetic, right? A little dubious. You niggas look a little dubious about that, right? A little shaky and un untrustworthy. I think you guys are up, up to something. I can't believe that you went in there and bought so much stuff, right? A little shady looking. That process, yeah, I've never seen the niggas buy a thousand dollars worth of shit. So look a little shady, right? Yeah, look suspect, hmm? Suspected, huh? Under suspicion. Very odd. What about peculiar? What about strange? They even use the word queer. Hmm? Yeah, queer, right? Funny, funny looking, right? Distrustful, mistrustful, skeptical, doubting, disbelieving, huh? Wavy, teary, charity, shy, hesitant. You know what I'm saying, right? So this was in the mind of Constable Dale Jones as he observed two black men going in Nordstrom buying up a thousand dollars worth of stuff. Him felt like it was his duty because he don't think everything that he just seen he couldn't believe it, right? <laughs> that's, that's suspicious, right? What other point could you use suspicion other than this situation? Because they were in a store purchasing stuff. Suspicion is the only thing you can look at is the fact that they were sitting there purchasing what they was. Here was Barney Fife sitting over here observing, tabulating, counting in the pocket. His understanding what he believed black people, what kind of money you should be. And if you come in Northstone, you should be asking for credit or you look short asking, Daryl, can you get $5 to help me to pay for this? This is the kind of mentality he got. So they go outside, go load up the vehicle. Now they got all these bags, right? Think about Daryl then seen them with all these bags. Yet Daryl feel like he's got to go all out. Because he's got to save Nordstrom. Or Daryl just got an itch that he needs scratching. And you look like the perfect tool for me to get it scratched off. Okay. So we see that he end up trailing them in the cars according to what they say. They make a bus a certain way. End up end up coming in opposite direction that you've seen in the video. You see him kind of cat corner. They say beelining. On the side of him, he gets out and he says immediately, right, get out of the car. Let me see your license. Now, wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Get out the car. Let me see your license. Now, wait a minute. In, the, in, in this instance where he's doing that, anybody in their right mind is going to be like, wait a hold on, man. What's what, so up, sweetie? What's up with all this? What, 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 I mean, you, okay, I don't have a problem with obeying the law. But again, first of all, I don't know you from Adam. Maybe my assumption might be now that the fact that you was in the store and I thought you might have been a worker in the store. But now I see you outside and you over here with me. I need you to address who you are to me. He says, because you see my badge that he showed on the side of his waist, right? uh, the side of his waist. Right. And he got some insignia on his shirt specifies to tell me this is who I am. Now they question who he is, but he doesn't want to comply with that. But he's more persistent on about what he's doing and you need to comply and show me your license. Now, my man says the reason why he pulls up into the front of the store is because he's going to record and all of this will be good evidence. Now that in itself was smart. It's putting yourself so that you can have recorded and you understand because again you're going to be able to use this later for your evidence as proven what took place so we see an unmarked car right and then we see that uh he gets into this start talking to them and then he says 
after they start being like, wait, man, we ain't got to give you a license, you know, woo, this, this, and that. And he get mad, he said, because you're running your mouth. Now, wait a minute. One, you come out your vehicle talking about you want to see license. Two, you saying because I'm running my mouth. Three, you end up coming up and saying because you look suspicious. Four, you understand? You, you, everything that you coming up with don't have no real reason for the purpose of what you're doing. But this is what people, ADOS, BADOS, FBA, F, F, FBA, right? Foundation of Black America, we all the same. Ain't no difference. All that splitting up everybody be trying to do, get that shit about y'all head. We all won. All right? We all won. Anyway, so when we go through these situations, these are reoccurring situations that happen all the time amongst us, right? This ain't like nothing new. This is not something in an oddly happenstance that it happens. No, it's always it's a continuum. And so... He goes on, this Daryl Jones says, well, first of all, he said the brother was starting to tell him, say, well, you know what? You don't have the right to be running my place, right? Now, again, you can't, just, I mean, you can't really object to that because, again, you can't prohibit him because once he got the license in his, you know, his, let's say his car, he has the ability to run it once he sees it and get it. Then uh, you could prohibit that from that. And again, that's that's under the jurisdiction of what he has capabilities of doing. But I understand why you're implying that he don't have it because you say you don't have no real reason. As you heard that officer said that you need to have, as he said, reasonable reason to stop. Now, his reasonable reason that he's saying is that it's because you suspicious. Now, what were they suspicious of? We'll get to that. So, they go on. He goes on. He says, okay, if you don't show me your license, I'm going to tow your car. Right? So, again, he's threatening. Right? You threaten somebody. If they don't comply with you, you already trying to reprimand them by abuse of your power by saying, well, I'm going to get your car towed, which is going to cost you money. Right? Think about that. Get your car towed, 250, 350, whatever it might be, then every day, so forth. So basically, you understand, know if you ain't got the money, now that's going to offset. And, you know, now you got the siphon from here to get here because your car is what's kind of help you to get to and fro to get to make the money. So something else has to be expendable. So maybe you can't pay cable. Maybe you can't do, you know, so some things, depending on how your money, you know, if you got long money, then that's different. But again, with your money short. Right? So it's just sometimes it depends on circumstances and the individuals that who this happens to. And so he threads about towing them with the car. He said if they don't comply, then he goes into I'm gonna lock you up. Right? Now again, see, these things are such on the norm that sometimes people be hearing us and they think that we be making these stories up. But a lot of these times this is just what it is until you actually see it on the video, then you come to a realization that you realize that guess what? This is happening, and these black people are not making this up. Well, we don't need you to validate it. This is just what it is, right? So he goes on, and uh, he says, as you heard that Daryl Jones, the constable Daryl Jones says, the reason why you were suspicious is because you backed around. Now, wait a minute. They're in a parking lot. In, I don't know if there's other stores, is it kind of, you know, when they have other stores, is it kind of a mall? I'm not sure what that is, but let's just say, they're in a mall. Again, according to what the brother had said, if you was in the store and you seen them purchasing them, purchase stuff, and then they backing around, what makes you think that they can't do that after they done already been a customer, a paying customer, and decide maybe they was going to go back? But you already had your suspicion on automatically when you seen them. So what was it that you thought that was suspicious that, again, two black men buying over $1,000 worth of the shoes, again, uh, kind of car looked like it's saying a kind of signal on the steering wheel, looked like a Kia, right? And so, I, again, you know, I don't know was a brand new one or not, don't matter, but it don't matter. But the point is, y'all were just looking too much like, you know what I'm saying, in his eyes, y'all was not supposed to be in there purchasing that kind. Now, to see, that just go to show you how people be observing us and got us 
categorized in their mind as to what kind of economics we should be having. They feel like, again, you shouldn't be able to buy things that they can't do because they just assume that you don't make as much as they do. But again, we are individuals, our, our situations are different, so you never know. But that's just the way they program it, so when they see you and observing you, you know what I'm saying, it's kind of like they looking you head to toe, and then again, your sum total of what you, your appearance is and what you driving and the way, if, if it's over the balance, they have to go to, hey, how are you getting this? You're selling drugs? Right? All right. So, so we see that based on this interaction between the two, that he's calling for backup, right? Right? He's calling for backup. And while he's calling for backup, you hear one of the brothers say, well, you know, you'll hit that 911. Now, again, I myself have personally been in a situation that I have done that my damn self. Well, I done seen the vehicle. Let's say, for instance, if you can imagine, I'm going from east to west and, and the uh, officer is going from west to east. He does a U-turn, come behind me, trails me because we this road that I'm on is has some extensive and it's dark and it's secluded. So I know he's going to pull me over. So first thing I do is I hit the horn and I say I call the police on the police, right? Because I got to have somebody to check on you because I ain't up on what you about to do. So when they do pull me over in the whole bit, and I'm sitting there and we're going through the rigmarole, right? We're talking that, that, talking that talk. And then the other ones pull up and they looking like, well, damn, what's this about? Because when I tell them, I'm like, hey, some suspicious car, follow me, whoop de woo. And you know what I'm saying? Can you have somebody because I'm trailing this in here and I'm just, and I had them come. So now that's giving me some evidence on behalf that something's to go down that there's some records. So I think that's kind of like what people got. We sometimes got to do. Gonna have to call police on police when you in those situations. Now, if your ass is wrong, don't be calling up police. You making it worse on yourself. But we just saying as a deterrent or as circum secondary evidence of a situation, then you may have it. Because when they come, they other ones gonna say, "Hey, we were called." It's you guys. You, you get what I'm saying? So sometimes you may have to do that, and they did do that, right? So we see that about five minutes later, you see another police officer come, and Ask him, you know, like, you know, what, what's 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 the what's the issue going on here, right? So he says the reason why I'm doing all this is because they look suspicious, right? And matter of fact, even before that, remember when you heard that police officer? Now he was reaching for shit because he didn't have nothing really legally to do what he did. Whether his his suspicion was warranted, which we find that it wasn't, that was all full of fool's gold. He was going for so many things that he didn't have nothing, but it irked him so damn bad that you was buying merchandise that he knew he didn't have no real reason. But did you hear when he says about he wants your license and all I'm just to see your license. If you got no warrant or nothing, huh? If you got no warrant or nothing, what did that have to do with the situation at hand? You, uh, again, you have nothing for the real reason why you is, but let's just say, like a lot of brothers, a lot of times, again, you may have some old court dates you didn't went to, whatever the reason might be, you know, child support. Well, it could be a whole lot of things. And they know. A percentage of the time, some brothers going to have some kind of paper trail on them. So whatever reason, I'm initially stopping you, which you may be on some BS, but now because you got that, that's going to validate what I did, and now I got this as a consolation, just in case this shit that I'm trying to stick to you don't work, I got that too. You get what I'm saying? And this is what constantly we always under these kind of situations, and a lot of people don't understand that. Right. So that's why we have to do the things that we do as to try to make some deterrent to try to prohibit some of this stuff is because it gets out the way. It's like, again, you know, it's like if somebody comes to a gunfight and they got one or they got a bullet or they got a gun and they shoot. Somehow you wrestling in them, they shoot and you knock the bullets out. You ain't going to sit there to wait for a motherfucker to reload to try to shoot you again. Right. 
You get that one shot, I ain't going to let you get second, third, fourth. You understand? So that's what they be doing in their situation. They don't have that first bullet to get you, so they throw them more shit. So you know a lot of times when you get a ticket, you never get just one ticket. You get two, three tickets because they know that initial ticket, whatever the bullshit, air freshener, or had no seat belt on, didn't use a turn signal, all this shit is very questionable. Then the other shit that they find later, they come to find out, oh, expired plates, no insurance. You understand? All this other shit, oh, you got a warrant for arrest of warrant. All that, now that gives uh, evidence or it gives credence to the situation that they created, which was never there in the first place. But they just do it because why? We're going to figure that out. So it goes on. He says that, uh, so the other officer end up pulls up. And he says, you know, the officer, okay, you know, said, you know, they bought a bunch of stuff. He's running their miles. Uh, he's making sure so I didn't get his ID or his license plates, and he didn't have him show me no ID, right? And, you know, even before then, he was still searching for stuff even before that officer got there. Because he remember he said that, you know, he told my man, shut up, right? He's like, you shut up. You know what I'm saying? You don't know the law. You're threatening me? You're threatening a, a police officer? See, a lot of these dudes that got these jobs, and again, we won't blanket statement and say 1,100%. We're just going to say that there's a portion that should not be in these uniforms because they ain't really not built to be police officers. And so when you run across these kind of cats and they trying to come up, as they say, right? They're trying to come up. Through the ranks, they need so many rest again. Type of jobs that he got the Barney Fife job again. He's kind of like a security guard. He can't he a constable. He ain't you know what I'm saying. He needs something to try to get himself so he can use his credentials on his, let's say his resume, so that he can use to try to elevate himself. So again, he can try to get two fish for one, and then be able to use it. Look, see, I, I got these guys in at your expense, though, right? Yeah, I'll be trying to do this shit at your expense. And so we see that the officer that does come on the premise asks some questions that should have been asked. Oh, matter of fact, was just reasonable in a situation. Again, he's coming on a situation, not because this dude is who he is. Now, again, he says something that I'm not out and whether it is true or not, I don't know. But he comes in, asks the man what's what the you know, run the deal down to me. You hear what he kind of says. And so he says, well, um, he even started saying, well, you know, the way they was running around, I didn't know if they had guns. You know what I'm saying? Uh, remember, you're talking about, well, you don't have any authority over me. He was always trying to get it in a situation that you are antagonizing, threatening him, put him in a situation that validates because he didn't have any damn thing. Really think about it. He really didn't have any damn thing. Right? And so this officer that comes on there did what you would do in right mind and reason, right? Because also he does say some shit like, I got the right to do whatever I want. I'm a police officer. Again, some people ain't built to have certain power because they say power corrupts absolutely, absolutely. And so this individual is the type of individual get in the situation and can ruin lives. Matter of fact, the fact that he's a constable and dealing with the courts, I think that anybody who should happen to hear, and again, I'm probably the most, I am the most suppressed show in the back corner of the internet, but by him being who he is, and once this all manifests later on as time goes on, if this dude has ever pulled you over, I think you need to have your, your case re-looked at, because this guy had an issue. Because he's seen black men buying stuff that he felt like, in his eyes and mind, they couldn't afford to do this. How can black people, from his perception, do what they do, and somehow my system can't accept it? There has to be something. And I believe my suspicion, my gut feeling is going to be, gonna be right. It's even if I have to make up the equation to get it. And that's what you've seen there, right? And so we see that, again, that's why you can't blanket all cops, that this particular cop, but it's still, he was still for the home team, right? As much as what you see and the end up, you was free to go, 
right? After he questioned and found out that he had no reasonable reason for doing and then pulling over and all that other stuff, he allowed him to walk away. And then when he comes over and talk, did you peep this? Now, he says, after they had, you know, my man, because again, I'm like, man, you ain't got to make no speech. What you making all this speech for? Just get the info, right? You don't need to make no speech. He's sitting there trying to run back the whole, the, the get down. Like, no, hold on. What my man name is? What, who was he work for? Who he employed for? Okay, so did you peep how my man tried to act like, I don't know my man at all. I don't know nothing about him. I don't know nothing. How you get this in my, I don't know, right? He came in there like my man. The doctor that was on um, Trayvon Martin's, I don't know Zito, I don't know anything, right? Mother that did the forensic on Trayvon Martin came in and said he don't know nothing about nothing, and he's the one that did the then autopsy. Same thing here. He don't know. You ain't never been called before at Nordstrom. He's a constable. He a sheriff. You want to talk to him in the back and you allow him to just leave like that? <laughs> you understand? See, when they talk about on cold. White folks will protect white folks even when they're not right. They will still protect them in the littlest, minute way that's possible. So he's going to leave the detective work on you. Right? When you ask him on a question, he had amnesia all the time. <laughs> not sure. You know what I'm saying? And he just said, well, what makes us suspicious? The one brother said, well, what makes us suspicious? You niggas. That's what makes you suspicious. He was a nigga. I don't understand why some of y'all don't get it. You know I understand. I understand y'all won't change. I understand that everybody's looking at things and thinking there's a new day, new time. But some things, some again, the more things change, the more things stay the same. Ain't nothing change on this. It's all still the same. And so again, you know, you just gotta look at it like this, man. That's what we go through on a daily basis. People try to be always making the thing like, oh, you know, you, you guys are always complaining, you're bitching and moaning, and the fact, now the fact is, this is what we live and what we go through on a constant basis, you know. And I know when the story broke, I didn't see nobody deal with this story. They just kind of let this story kind of settle to the side again. That was done back on the third. Uh, matter of fact, it came out November the twentieth, right? That's been about three days ago. I ain't seen nobody do this story, so I decided I'm gonna go ahead and just do this one shit wonder, right? And so you just tell me. What you think about that whole situation? You know what I'm saying? Because we see it so often, see so much, to the point it's getting to the fact it's kind of like I'm again. I'm gonna talk about later about this other some other situation. I'm gonna do one hit one to try to get caught up, right? And you know everybody keep playing down the you know this the, the race aspect, and then you got black mugs out here who see situations and somehow caper for the other side and then try to make you like. What you doing is wrong. So anyway, this is Black Minds News. I'm Mr. your host, Mr. Blows Your Mind. You know, you like, share, subscribe, dislike, comment, all that good stuff, right? Wanted to let y'all know, Mr. Blows Your Mind ain't gone away. I'm still here. Just been sitting back in the cut. And again, this is the most hated show in the black corner of the internet. And to the next show, y'all, peace, love, and hair grease and all that good stuff. Uh, are you ready to hit that? You ready to hit that for me? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. hit that for me then. Let's see if we did it right. You did it right. There you go. All right. No, that ain't that. that what you doing? That ain't the right one. There you go. There you go. All right, once again, I want to thank everybody for your participation and clicking on the video. Again, when you see your brother, greet your brother and your sister. What's good, brother? What's good, sister? If you can't do that much, at least give the universal nod. We got to get all this hate, jealousy, envy, and strife out of our ass and understand that we is all we got. Understand and know the time. As time goes on, there are some that are here to seek our demise. So it is incumbent that we stay mindful, vigilant, and understand that everybody don't love us. Those of us who got allies got to ask two specific questions. When shit and if shit get hot, is your allies going to be down for the fight or they going to jump the hell out because the pot done got too hot? Two, ask him if they ever heard of John Brown. 
is John Brown something that is real or is it something that white folks made up to make you believe that white folks will stick their hand out to try to save you? If that do be so, how come we ain't never seen, never been heard, never made the production of a John Brown movie? Now you done did Django, but where's John Brown at? Why is that? So, again, I'm your host, Mr. Blow Your Mind, the most hated show in the black corner of the internet and YouTube. And coming back for my hiatus. Again, want to say peace and love to each and every one of you. To my next show, y'all. Peace, love, to the next show. To the next show. Thank you.